Hey, Teresa, welcome to the Women Awaken podcast. Hey, Whitney, thanks for having me. Thank you for, for being on and for joining us and for sharing with us today about a topic that I, I think a few guests have touched on, but we haven't really gotten deep into it really thoroughly. So I'm really excited to do that. It's EFT, which is Emotionally Focused Therapy. And Actually, you are- it's Emotional Freedom Techniques. <laughs> but that's okay because that points to the thing that's a confusing thing. The EFT people think like electronics, funds, transfer, emotionally focused therapy. It's confusing. Okay. Yes. Forgive me. As a therapist, that's where yes. my brain went. But that's okay. emotional freedom techniques. Um, okay. Also, the acronyms are so out of hand in they are. psychology and spiritually in the world in general. We have too many acronyms. But okay. Emotional freedom techniques. So please enlighten us then because clearly. I'm confused. What? Oh, I think you understand more than you're giving credit for, but the acronyms are confusing. And sometimes it's easier to just think of it as tapping, which is what so many people know it as, but it's all the same thing. So whether you call it emotional freedom techniques or tapping, we're talking about the exact same thing. And tapping is a combination of ancient Chinese wisdom and modern psychology. And it has been around in the way that we know it as emotional freedom techniques since the early 90s. So it's not new, but it's only just getting the acceptance, recognition, and publicity, at least uh, here in Western culture, that I think it really truly deserves. And so it combines with the ancient Chinese wisdom, you have literally tapping on meridian endpoints. So our meridian system runs through our entire body. And think about going to get a massage or going to have acupuncture done or something like that. You're going to have those meridian points access to release things, whether it's muscular tension or physical pain, sometimes even emotional pain gets worked on with something like acupuncture. So that's where the meridians come in. And then with modern psychology, we're bringing in, you know, focusing on whatever the negative feeling is, whether that's a physical feeling, an emotional feeling, whether it's something that happened a really long time ago, something that's happening for you right now, or something that's more future paced that you're anxious or worried about, you can work on any or all of those things with the same efficacy using this technique. And what you do is you start by focusing on whatever that thing is. Um, I love the example of a headache because it's something tangible that I think everybody's experienced. And it's one of my favorite things to give people who are skeptical, especially to work on, because when you can release a headache from your system, you feel very empowered to try this on things that are perhaps a little less tangible um, and less easy to notice right away. So you focus on the pain of that headache while you are setting up the um, round of EFT on the side of your hand and tapping on it. You're always just kind of tapping with your own fingers on your body doing that. And at the end of EFT, like a round of EFT, the goal is to get to a place where you love, accept, and forgive yourself, or you move closer to that feeling. And so with a headache, you'd say something like, even though I have this awful headache right now, I love, accept, and forgive myself. Some version of that three times. And then you start moving through the other eight points that are known to pretty much release any energetic blockage. And energetic blockage is the source of any dis-ease that we have in our body. And those points are the top of the head, the eyebrow, the side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, under the mouth, the collarbone, which is really more the chest. It's not actually the bone. It's below more of like the meaty part of your chest and under your arm. And while you're going through those points, you're describing, and you're doing this out loud and as specifically as possible because EFT really does favor specificity, describing that headache. Does it have, like, where do you feel it? Is it in your temples? Is it in the back of your head? Is it sharp? Is it dull? Is it achy? Does it have a texture? Does it have a color? Like, what are you envisioning when you're thinking about this headache? And you're, you know, tapping five to seven times in each area as you describe this. So it might be like, my head is just throbbing and you're moving to the next point. I can't focus or concentrate. It hurts so bad. And you move the side of the eye. It's aching. It's throbbing. It feels like somebody's stabbing me in the head. You know, whatever it is, you're describing all of that. And as you do that, those blockages start to dissipate. And most people within just one round, which would be the three times on the hand with the setup statement, and then three times through all eight of those other points that I mentioned, really notice a major change. Um, And as you get to the end of it, 
if you feel genuinely inclined to, you can start switching to something a little bit more positive. You know, like I'm open to the idea that I can release this headache. I'm open to the idea that it's safe for me to feel better right now. Um, whatever feels in alignment. Um, I'm not a fan of trying to force affirmations on oneself or make things seem rosier or more positive than they are. So sometimes you might end up doing an, another round and it might stay negative for a bit, but that's okay because we're rooting out the negative stuff so that we have room for the positive stuff to grow. And through doing this process, you can lower your cortisol up to like 43% in just 10 minutes. So that naturally is going to bring stress way down, pain way down, not just in that area you're focused on, focused on for the headache, but in all areas of your life. So it really has a very um, beneficial overall positive impact on well-being. Yeah, it sounds like it. And then I imagine that you can also, I mean, you described a headache, right? So that's physical, but I know that it also is meant to break up and dissipate emotional blocks, yeah. right? Or emotional things. Anything so you can feel. So for example, if somebody was feeling, um, you know, you, you talk Teresa about your, in your own experience that you struggled a lot with feeling dissatisfied and stressed in your life. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I definitely noticed, I think most people have this where, you know, maybe your day is going fine, but then all of a sudden something happens and you're like, man, I knew this wasn't going to work out. This is such, you know, why do I keep doing this? And you get kind of down on yourself and it's suddenly like, you get that sort of like, um, denser energy where you where maybe before you felt a little bit lighter and then you just feel that heaviness of, you know, weighing down. Can this help you kind of move through a point of, like that in your day? Absolutely. So what you're describing sounds like being out of flow or maybe having resistance to whatever you have going on. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is being conscious that that's going on. Um, one of the things that I noticed when I started doing EFT regularly was that my level of consciousness increased a lot just on a regular basis. So I was able to identify more and more like, ooh, I'm like really resisting this thing I need to do, or I'm just really feeling like not in alignment with my day or what's happening. So if you do recognize that and you are aware of that and you still need to do whatever that thing is and you can't just honor you know, what your emotions are and do the other thing that you'd rather do, then you can start again with the tapping and something like, you know, even though I feel really resistant to fill in the blank with whatever it is, I want to love, accept, and forgive myself. And you would describe whatever that is that you're feeling, you know, all of, all of this resistance, all of this, you know, these upstream thoughts, all of this kind of fighting against what it is that I need to do, you know, kind of why am I showing up this way? What would it take for me to, you know, get into a different energy that would allow me to really have a different experience today, kind of in switching it to the positive and just kind of see it through to the end. But you'll, you'll notice a shift as you do it, like before and after. And we always want to write down, I use like the SUD scale, subjective units of distress, like you'd use it at the doctors to like rate a pain or other places. Um, and you always want to write down your number to begin with. So in this case, it would be like, how resistant am I feeling on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is like super resistant and zero is like, good to go, no resistance at all. And then once you go through a round, you want to see how that shifts and write your number down again. Obviously, the ultimate goal is to get to zero. If you've gotten to zero, you've probably figured out what the root cause is, and you're going to be in awesome shape to move forward with whatever's going on. But for most people with something like resistance or just wanting to feel a little bit better in their day, it's quite a nice enough shift to just move from like a seven or an eight down to a three or a four. It's enough. So I always say this technique is really cool because you can use it like a Band-Aid and just kind of get what you need in the moment to be able to keep moving forward and doing your thing. Or when you have more time or when you desire working with a professional that can really get into those nooks and crannies that you might not be able to even see for yourself. You can kind of deeply clean things out and get to that root cause so that you don't necessarily need the Band-Aid application for that kind of thing again. Yeah, definitely. And the other thing that's kind of jumping out at me, it reminds me that seems really beneficial from this practice. Have you ever read The Power of Now by Eckhart? Oh, yeah. Curry? Yes. So, yeah. uh, I mean, it was either that or his other book, like The New Earth or something, where he said he one day was observing ducks or swans or something at a local pond. And he noticed that when they kind of came together and gotten like a little squabble, they would like shake off their entire body to get rid of that energy of frustration, anger. And then they were fine. And they were back in their calm swan energy and floated away. 
And so when mm-hmm. I think of what you're saying, what seems so powerful is that you're rather than allowing something to solidify, right? A negative feeling a, a, a headache that could grow, um, a negative thought pattern that's starting, you can stop it in its tracks and identify it and say, okay, I'm, I, I noticed this. I'm having this feeling of negativity. I'm having this feeling of woe is me. Things are not good. How can I release it before it develops into, you know, into the rest of my day? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's the same thing with like a rabbit that gets chased by a fox or something and gets away. And then all of a sudden, like if you watch wildlife videos, you will see that rabbit like and once they start their heart beating like crazy, they shake, they shake like crazy and they relieve yeah. that that stress that they get rid of the trauma. They shake off the trauma of what just happened. And then they just get on with their life because they're still alive and they escape the fox. But yeah, and we don't want to let that settle in. And the opposite thing that we can do is we can notice that feeling and then we can just shove it away or we numb it or whatever else. Yeah. So actually taking the time to acknowledge like, oh, I really am kind of feeling crappy right now. And this is what I'm feeling. And uh, let's like move that energy, you know, negative emotions, want to be moved and they want to come up and they want to come out. And that's what we do with the tapping. We move the energy in the body so that it releases until it comes up and out. Sometimes we find ourselves chasing the pain, which is an emotional freedom techniques technique. Um, that's why it's called techniques. Cause there's a lot of techniques within the technique. Um, but you know, one of them is to chase the pain because sometimes when you start working with one emotion, obviously it can transform into another emotion or you start chasing a physical pain. Maybe you're chasing that headache and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, now I'm feeling my neck feels a little funny. Feels like the pain's moved and we just keep acknowledging where it is and allowing it to move until it releases outward. Yes. Yeah. And so important to release it quickly and identify it quickly. Cause I know that, and I think this is common when I kind of get in a bad mood, if I stick with it too long, I kind of start indulging in it. There can be mm-hmm. something indulgent about negative emotions, right? Like, sure. well, I'm not even going to try. I can't really even make an effort today because I'm, you know, I feel bad. I feel overwhelmed by this. So I'm just going to sink into it and maybe stay in my, you know, puddle uh, of self-pity for the rest of the day, maybe three days. I don't know. Depends (laughs) on how long I want to. I totally feel that. I love working with like that kind of an emotion or even like the emotion of procrastination, which is really just like an inertia of our energy. And sometimes with procrastination, we just have to like honor our rebellious side that like, you know, even though I don't feel like doing this, you can't make me do this. I want to love, accept and forgive myself, even though no way the heck am I doing this today? Nope, not me. I... I love and accept myself anyway, and kind of going through that rebellious pattern in a round of tapping. And then another thing I love to do when it comes to procrastination and self-sabotage is whatever that thing is that you're trying to do, just do a tapping round on not having to do it at all. Just release yourself completely from needing to do it. Like, even though I really want to do insert project thing, whatever here, I'm open to the idea that I don't actually need to do this at all. And just releasing it, you know, I don't have to do it. You know, at the end of the day, you can't make me and I don't need to do it. And if I never do it, I'll still be all right. And the thing that happens that's really interesting is that once you do that, you usually feel a lot more inspired and motivated to actually do the thing. So just kind of playing around with the brain a little bit and seeing how you can move the energy um, towards empowerment and emotional freedom. And for a lot of people, the thing that they get a little bit stopped by is the fact that the really, really low emotions do require you to move through things like anger that, you know, so many people are unfamiliar with or don't feel safe expressing or have been told like, I'm not going to be an angry person, or I just shove that down or what have you. And we have to move that and express it. And I personally find it a lot of fun in sessions to work with people on anger and allow that to move and just have so much fun with it, you know, and yeah, it it can, it can be so freeing. Once you get past that and you really start to feel free, then you, that's the only way that you can really get to the empowered and enlightened states that you desire. And talk about chasing the pain, you know, anger is, is always like the steam that burst out above what's really causing us to feel this, you know, frustration, rage, you know, it's, it's like the thorn that's lodged into your foot. That's making you act out. And yeah. because I, I'm, I think a lot of us have had this experience. I know I have where I start out really angry yelling, and then I burst out crying, sobbing, just an emotional breakdown, yeah. outpour emotional, yeah. you know expression. And 
but again, it's unfortunate that, you know, so few people have outlets to this, just the way you describe the rabbit, the way I describe the swan, the, you know, the animal kingdom doesn't care what other people think of them, right? We don't, yeah. they don't, they're not social, socially conscious, self-conscious creatures, but we are. So we've kind of made these social norms that you don't show any sort of, you know, elaborate expression of emotions or distress, or you can't, you can't really shake right. it off is what I'm saying. Because right? it's not safe to be you. Yes. Yes. Which is why we and have to find these techniques in the first place is because not being safe to be you is basically the crux of most of our problems in well, our Well, exactly. Worlds. And it's also the foundation of our energetic system. So if we look at our chakra system and things like that, our first and second chakras, those low chakras in our energy system, which should be in their best, you know, uh, sense, like a container for us to manifest into. And for most of us, it's like a colander. That's just like stuff's like escaping all over the place. We can't hold anything. It's a freaking mess. And so when we can fortify those through, I like to use kind of like a combination of like inner child work and like now adult work kind of stuff. Mm. We can really fortify that. And a lot of times we have to, we have to allow that anger to come in and you know, kind of visualize things, whether it's like visualizing our inner child, just like setting fire to all the things that, you know, wronged us or were unfair or whatever else. And then we get to see that fiery, crazy side kind of burn down and turn into empowerment energy and to kind of come back and fill us up as the adults that we are now with all of our dreams and desires and to empower us to feel like, you know what? I deserve whatever this is. And I have a right to feel angry and express that anger when I am not getting what I deserve in this life. And you just change that anger to empowerment energy, which allows us to move up into, you know, the higher chakras as we produce things. So yeah, it's, it's fascinating work. Yes, definitely. And that reminded me of, you know, I've done, when I do inner child work with my clients as a mental health therapist, I often do that exercise where to begin inner child work, I do a guided meditation where their current self goes to visit their past yeah, self. I love doing that too. State of distress, right? But it reminded me of what you said where, because every time I've done that personally, I'm like, oh my gosh, my younger self would be so impressed by me. Like, because you don't take time to think about that, right? Because we're humans by nature tend to always look forward, right? Like, okay, well, what's the next thing? Yeah, I've accomplished all these things, but old news, what's next? But if you go back, 10, 15, 20 years, yourself 20 years ago would look at you and be like, oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> and they would also have that sense of you are so powerful. You did all this. You've overcome all this. You've gotten through all this and you're where you are now, you know, hold yeah. your head high, know your ability, know your power, know your worth. Right. Yeah. And it can be really important to go back to and to thank that inner child. I, I don't even, I mean, there's so many versions I work with my clients on the inner baby, the inner three to six year old, the inner like preteen, so the, inner teen, the inner teenager, I think is like where it's at for most people. Like there's so much stuff that happened there, the inner young adult. And there's like the inner, like you last week, honestly, it's like, <laughs> there's like, there's so many versions that need some attention. Millions, every and version for every love. second. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And I forget what my point was. Um, goodness. I've lost my train of thought. Uh, but yeah, the inner child work is fascinating and I love, um, God going back and giving thanks to those yes. versions of you for, I mean, even if it, you know, they didn't, they were doing the best they could, the best they knew how and thanking them for keeping you safe and allowing you to get to this point in your life where you do know so much more and you're going to continue to learn and grow. And you'll be thanking this version of yourself in another 10 or 20 years for keeping you safe so that you could become the next version. <laughs> Yeah. And you know, the thought that just came to me is it sounds like tapping an EFT is almost like checking in with your current self, like right when it happens again, kind of like the duck or the swan, rather than doing it 10 years from now, right now, give yourself that appreciation of, I know this moment is hard. I know this feeling is, doesn't feel good, but I appreciate you. I see you. You don't have to do anything. I love you no matter what unconditionally I'm here with you. So it's kind of like in this one moment, like giving yourself that confirmation, reassurance, compassion and love that we would, that we do when we go visit our, our inner child, right. But in the moment. Absolutely. And, and finding a way to genuinely feel and create that love, acceptance and forgiveness, not just like saying it. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, it's, it's definitely a 
distinct difference, right? There's, there's, there's a big difference between saying that we love ourselves and actually feeling that shift that happens yeah. very subtly, sometimes over time, but it's, it is almost like this release of energy where this, again, this heaviness just sort of dissipates a little, yeah. you know, and I thought that at different times in my life. And it's, I mean, to me, that's, it's freedom, right? You're slowly mm-hmm. being freed from these energetic bonds that have created right. you to feel contained, limited by your beliefs, by your negative thoughts, by your negative, you know, um, understanding of yourself mm-hmm. and start to realize it's, it's really comes down to that where it's like, you don't have to do anything to be worthy, to be acceptable, to be here in this moment. Yeah. I mean, now is where it's at. You mentioned the power of now and quite literally our power is only good right here and now. Like I can't do anything about the past, can't do anything about the future. But the problem is, is that our energy is leaking to both of those places. So a lot of the work that I do is about helping people to call back their energy from the places that they're leaked to the past, the places that they're in. It's so much of it's subconscious. It's not like anybody's like, oh, I'm leaking all my energy back to those traumas I experienced 10, 20, 50 years ago. Yeah. And all the power that people leak with anxiety and future tripping and worrying into the future, also another place where we can do absolutely nothing to change anything so that they can call it back to right here and now and get present. And I know, I mean, I'm a mom of four, I have four boys and four boys. (laughs) My goodness. That must be a busy household. Vibrant. Very busy household. (laughs) Four boys, two dogs. I am the only female feminine energy happening here. Oh my gosh. (laughs) And I love it. I'm, you know, the queen, (laughs) but um, with all that going on, I didn't discover how to really implement and use all of this until I already had all four of them. Um, And I knew I didn't feel present in the way that I wanted to as a mom in, in the moments with them. I knew I didn't feel present in creating the, the legacy and the business and the future that I wanted and everything else. And this technique really, really helped to get me present. Like nothing else. I was like, whoa, like I'm here now. And I could feel it, not just like pretending to like be in the moment or whatever, but really being able to get in the moment. And that's not even like, I wasn't doing tapping on like, you know, even though I'm not present, I wasn't tapping on that at all. I was tapping on other things and just finding so much more presence in the present moment. It's often like, um, I don't know, if you go to like some kind of a crazy concert or something and you've got a front row ticket and you're like in all the chaos on the floor. Awesome. You're up close. You love the band. You're happy to be there, but also like total chaos. And that's kind of how my life felt on a day-to-day basis. It was like, love to be here. I love this life. You know, love my husband, love my kids. You know, it's beautiful. It's blessed. I'm grateful, but it was chaos. And, you know, so many things could have been done better in retrospect or made calmer or more clear, but, you know, and then when I do a round of tapping, it's as if I go from like that mosh pit environment up to like the nosebleed seats. And I'm just like, ah, like I've got some space up here because nobody else is really here. I can see everything. I can still hear the beautiful concert and see the performers and take it all in. But I have this clarity and this sense of peace of mind and this calm that comes over me without anything changing other than the fact that I have regulated my nervous system along with honoring my emotions. Yeah. Yeah. And that I have quite a few thoughts that are are coming up, but one thing that came to mind, I think as you described the mosh pit is Um, well, I I naturally go to this because I'm, I specialize in addiction and disorders. And so, you know, a big theme is that you're not ready to get sober until you're ready and emotional sobriety is a thing. And so when you described that, I was thinking, you know, delving into EFT and actually wanting to begin these practices, you kind of have to get to the point where you're done with the mosh pit, right? Cause the mosh pit is fun. I love mosh pits, but it's, you're getting knocked around and it's, you don't know what to expect next. And it's, it brings up your, lo- your more sort of like aggressive, like angry, um, yeah. energies. And you, and it's a great to- excuse for all the things yes. that you're not changing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Cause there, it thrives there, right? You don't have to change because it's celebrated there, anger and aggression and all that. Yeah. You have to be ready to say, you know, I think I'm done. I think I'm ready to go sit in the bleachers and just enjoy the show and have peace. And it's the yeah. same with an addiction, right? You're, you're not done until you're really through the ringer of, you know, this chaos is getting old. It can be fun. Right. It can be exciting. It can be dramatic, 
the same can be said of a, you know, an, an unhealthy relationship that yeah. can be so passionate and feel so exciting, but it's exhausting because it's not actually based really in love. Right. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, so as you develop it, more of that love, that acceptance and that forgiveness, you start to desire leveling up in yes. all of that. And it gets yes. so much more painful to resist your own expansion. And that's when you need these tools to be able to continue expanding and continue growing without it being so painful. Cause otherwise you've already got your, your brain's already got its, you know, belief set and all its things that it thinks it has figured out that are just holding you back. And you have to be able to change those beliefs. You have to be able to release those things and teach yourself, you know, new things. And of course, you know, in my practice, I use hypnotherapy alongside with EFT and things. So like, we're getting all the subconscious stuff rooted out, but you know, even with just like the EFT, you can recognize when you've hit the wall again. You know, um, I know that when we bought this house that I'm in right now, a few years ago, like the home buying process brought out so many blockages that I needed oh. to face, you know, all the things that you go through with, you know, getting your mortgage, all the things that you go through with issues around the house and stuff yeah. that needs to get fixed. That just interestingly enough happens to mirror all the things that are going on inside of you <laughs> in these ironic and interesting ways. Like I removed so many blockages during that process. It was insane. And I also thought, oh my goodness, I didn't know how to do this or have these tools. This would have been like a total, uh, I'm looking for a word that's not explicit because I don't know if you use explicit words. Yeah, you can, you can. We use explicit words here. It would have been a total shit show. Yeah. It just would have been. And um, it, it was in some ways still, but we made the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing how the most unexpected things, right? Like you wouldn't necessarily, I mean, we all know that buying a house is stressful, but you don't expect for it to be like an emotional purging of stuff. That's also kind of, you know, that needed to be addressed that comes oh, yeah. through, you know, and it can be, that can happen in so many different ways, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. And you're speaking to me so much, Teresa, in regards to when you spoke to leveling up and that when you do this work and you really start to dedicate yourself to it, um, that you don't, uh, that you no longer can tolerate energies that are anything less than loving and kind and compassionate. But the tricky thing is that you have to be the one to do it for yourself first. It doesn't happen different. Like, it's not like you can have, you can have friends and a partner that love you, but if you're still down in this energy of, I can't accept myself, I'm still going to judge and criticize myself. You're going to allow, you're going to be at the same level. So you allow it in, but you know, I've heard that and it just always kind of shakes me is that once you level up, you're no longer, it's not going to be palatable to you to tolerate people who would treat you anything less than with respect, with dignity, with consideration, with kindness, with love. And it can be upsetting when you're stuck in that cycle of accepting poor behavior, poor treatment. Yeah. Or when you're figuring this out on your own and you're leveling up and yet you're married to someone who's not, or, you yes. know, your, your kids make it difficult or whatever, but that's also where I love to bring in things like the law of attraction and stuff where, you know, we can magnetize to us, whatever we want. Oh. And, you know, it's, it's just, there's so many ways that we can work on us without having to worry about anyone else needing to change. And there's also a lot of really interesting ways with emotional freedom techniques that we can also do like surrogate work and kind of get into the energy of others and develop a lot of compassion and understanding that is not there presently. And that can be really helpful too. Yeah, absolutely. Can we talk a little bit more about law of attraction in terms of, because a lot of my focus on this show is discussing how, you know, all this work that we're doing can lead us to more harmonious and beneficial and healthy relationships with, you know, family members, with friends, but also romantically for those who are in the dating world. So how, let's say, you know, like myself, I'll use me. I just, as we've described, I go through my life where sometimes I'm having a great day, good energy. And other times something happens and I dip into that, you know, negativity, that, you know, sort of sense of deficiency and thinking like, oh, this is, you know, this is not good. This nothing's going to work out. La da da how do we begin to shift? How can we begin to attract the people that we do want in our lives? Because, you know, like attracts like. So unfortunately, when you're in that mindset, you will find that people will come to you who are mirroring what you're doing. So if we really want to make that jump and start moving towards 
you know, make that really big decision of I'm no longer going to let people into my life, into my energy field, into, you know, my time who are not going to honor, accept, appreciate me. Yeah. So I know, um, if you're familiar with like Esther and Jerry Hicks and the work of Abraham with consciousness, they, um, they talk a lot about getting into the vortex. And I love that as far as like, you have to be able to visualize and our brain thinks in pictures. You have to be able to visualize what it is that you want to call in very specifically, because you can leave out some very important details and you'll find it funny later, but probably not while you're attracting the thing where you left out the details. Um, And so you want to be able to visualize and kind of get into that vortex, put yourself in there for 10 or 15 minutes a day where you are literally with or living that life or with that partner or whatever that you want. And what that feels like, be in that feeling that's going to create the vibration, the frequency of what you're looking to attract. If you're in that low negative energy, then you're going to be attracting that low negative energy. Mm -hmm. So in order to get out of that low negative energy, all you need to do is just reach for something that's downstream, just something that's with the flow, something that feels like it's taking you just a little bit, even it's just a teensy bit toward the way that you want to feel. And that's going to make it easier to reach on to the next thing. You don't have to go from like feeling low and negative to like all the way to the vibration that you're trying to get in a second or a minute or an hour or even a day. Sometimes it takes a little longer. You got to shift little by little, but ultimately you have to hold that vibration of the thing that you want to attract and just live in the feeling of it already being here, of you already having manifested it, received it. It's already done. Once you put something into the vortex, it is vibrationally there. It's like a vibrational escrow. And you have to learn how to pull it out by matching the vibration of it so that you can pull it into physical reality. And this is also where our chakra system comes back into it because that's it's manifesting, right? It's making something go from an idea into a physical reality. So those ideas start out in that airy fairy seventh chakra world where it's like, huh, anything is possible. And then all of a sudden we start to lower them down. So we're going from seventh chakra to first chakra and they start to come down. And that's when we're like telling a girlfriend or our mom or somebody, you know, oh, you know, I really want to call like this kind of person into my life. And uh, you think that's possible? I think, and it starts to kind of get these legs to it. And these, like uh, this idea is starting to kind of sprout. And then, you know, we're moving it down, moving it down. And it's here, we're going to kind of start, it can get jumbled up. If we don't have our chakras and our energy clear, we can start manifesting what we don't want. Uh, Maybe it's a repeat of a relationship that we've had a million times before that we're like, not, not calling one of those in again, but you know, here we are calling it in again. um, Cause we we're not clear ourselves. So we have to be really clear on what we want to call in really aligned with what we want to call in. And then we also have to have done that that work that we talked about earlier, that like inner child work, that stuff to clear out the negative energy of our past so that we have that solid container to bring them into, you know, and to be able to support it and hold it with the, the right boundaries and the right energy and the right love and everything else that we want to, to create what it is that we most desire. And along the way, guess what? We got to knock some things out of the way. So that's where, you know, the tapping comes in and it's like, you know what? hit a bump, you know, got knocked off of that frequency. I'm back in, you know, negative Nancyville and I'm like feeling myself and, you know, things suck. And now I got to get myself back on the vibration and and get back into it. So that's all it is. Just realigning over and over again with how you want to feel and what you want to attract as if it's already here. Yes. Yes. And something that popped in my head that I wanted to offer the audience is that I think a good indicator of when you might be, because again, it's one thing to be you know, tapping in this mindset of like, yeah, I can do this and I can overcome this. And I'm going to, or if you're in like a law of attraction zone and you're visualizing and you're calling in that energy, but then you go out into the world and let's say, you know, you meet somebody or you talk to somebody. And what I was going to offer is I'm going to call it a stop sign, right? Where we're going about our life. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves in a situation. If we notice that we're compromising ourselves or that we're not honoring ourselves in a connection, in relation to others or in a situation, that's a good time to identify and stop and say, this is exactly what's keeping me from get leveling up to where I want to. Cause my thought is that anytime we compromise ourselves, we're sort of telling the universe, Oh, actually, never mind. I don't mean it. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. I can't do that. I don't. Cause when you honor yourself the most, I feel like that's when people come in. Cause then you're being yourself, right? I noticed that when I compromise myself, I kind of let go of some parts of me to sort of make room to be more 
palatable, approachable to others. Yeah. And to me, that keeps me from what I'm truly meant for coming yeah. into my life. Because being authentic is about feeling ourself. And so often, especially as women, we are not in our energy. We are not like in our big self energy. We're like diminishing things. And then how can we ever feel authentic? How can we ever step into our power? How can we actually ask for and request what it is that we deserve, what we want, what we desire, whether it's, you know, from the universe or from our partner or from our kids or from our friends, it's just not, it's not going to be there for us if we can't feel and be authentic and be in our, our big energy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and that's a practice, I think, you know, is, um, to notice those situations, right. Where, you know, let's say it's just like a phone call with a, a coworker and you find yourself playing small or, you know, in any situation where you kind of, um, compromise, I, I know I do this with my work. Cause I, you know, just kind of shifted into more of a spiritual, you know, esoteric approach just a few years ago. So there's still a lot of people in my life from pre, you know, cosmic days that don't really get it. So I find myself sort of, you know, when I speak to this show or other shows that I'm on and things that I do, I'm like, oh yeah, well, like I do this thing. Um, it's just like, it's just this thing that I talk about stuff. And, yeah. that, and I notice I'm like, I'm making myself this big when, like you said, yeah. we gotta be our big self all the time. Like, embody it, Whitney, embody yeah. it. <laughs> and that's when real change comes is when you let yourself be big, even if it makes other people uncomfortable. You know, cause if you're not, it's not like you're going to going out and like, you know, t telling people off and making yourself all, you know, gregarious and important. You're yeah. just speaking to what you believe in and what you feel empowered by and what you feel passionate about. Yeah. And that, um, I've been thinking about that more recently is like, that's, I feel like a game changer or in most people's career is when they, they act consistently in what they believe in, what they speak to their vision and not sort of like catering to different audiences. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, who doesn't go through major shifts and changes in their life, whether it's going from being married to being divorced, whether you make a major shift in your career and, you know, it's more spiritual and esoteric now, and it wasn't um, before everybody goes through these big changes. And then we tend to try to like downplay it. So it's just an opportunity to notice that you're doing it. And, you know, we tap around on it, you know, even though I'm playing small and I said, I was never going to do that. And here I am doing it again. I love accept and forgive myself. And you just kind of call yourself out on stuff and also call in your, your power of forgiveness to appreciate, Hey, you know what? I was just trying to protect myself, you know, from whatever these things are that I think that people are going to think of me, the judgment that I feel like might be projected on me or whatever, but it, it's safe. It's safe to just put myself out there and, and it's okay. People are going to think what they're going to think. They're all changing too. The only thing that's certain and and this world is change and here I am changing. So I'm going to just embrace this change. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And then Teresa, something else I'd love to get into is another focus of your work is the importance of nervous system regulation, because that kind of, to me, it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing, right? Everything we just talked yeah. about, it's, a, if we can connect with our nervous system, we can be more aware of why we're having these sudden, like maybe pit in our stomach of like, oh gosh, yeah. I can't be myself mm -hmm. or and learning that we can, you know, for lack of better words, make friends with our nervous system, come to understand it. Cause I think actually a lot of people are also afraid of their nervous system, right? Like if we start to feel strange in our body dysregulation, like, you know, changes in like our heart racing or how we feel, we get scared rather than just recognize that our nervous system is literally just reacting to our environment, our emotional. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, always, when I talk to my clients, I'm always saying, you know, gosh, our nervous system gets dysregulated over and over again. And one of the things that I feel like is the magic of doing emotional freedom techniques is being able to understand when you're dysregulated and being able to regulate again, you know? Um, and that difference for me was like, I, I understood mindset. I understood the ways I was self-sabotaging myself. I understood logically how and why I could and should change things so that my life would be different. And yet I just kept hitting the same walls over and over and over again. And it wasn't until, I mean, gosh, I'm a prolific reader. I'm always reading and taking things in and learning. I love to learn, but I couldn't get the things that I would read and learn to come to fruition in my life. It was just kind of like, I get it. Why is it not working? When I started to do EFT tapping and regulate my nervous system, all of a sudden, like those books that I read, those things, it was like, oh, 
I can see the way through now. It makes sense. Like that regulation of my system made a huge difference in my ability to not be stuck in my life anymore, to move because energy got moving and so did I. And, you know, nervous system regulation at its core is that ability to move flexibly between those different states of arousal uh, in response to stressors. And that's what we all need so that we're more like that bunny rabbit or that duck or whatever else, where we can be like, okay, like fight or flight's here and I'm, you know, or I'm trying to flee or fawn or whatever it is that I'm doing. And now I'm going to return back to a state of like, peace and calm and relaxation in a normal kind of cyclical kind of a way that is healthy. And yeah, I mean, fight or flight is, I mean, that's what we're addressing most of the time with EFT tapping, you know, because we're going straight to, unlike with talk therapy, with EFT tapping, we're going right to the amygdala. We're going right to that tiny little part of the brain that's in charge of the fight or flight. And we are calming it immensely along with, you know, releasing all the emotional stuff. So we can really pop out of that very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Which again, like what an amazing tool to be able to do that. And cause then you don't have such a, a delay, right? You don't have that lag time, that big, you know, um, hurdle in your day, you can get right. through it. And then I feel like you get closer to reaching that state where you're not compromising yourself, where you're not settling for anything less because you know that you can overcome a lot. I think that's another thing that people struggle with is they get so used to being just knocked down by life, by situations that they stop trying eventually. Yeah. And so many people live so much of their life in that fight or flight state that when they actually can relax and feel what it's like to be regulated again, that feels unsafe. So you have to, you know, make that familiar. It's all about just making the way that you want to feel familiar with your brain, with your subconscious, everything else, and finding ways to like welcome it in. And that's, that's where I like to use hypnosis in conjunction, because that really does help to, to bring in that familiarity. But yeah, sometimes, you know, we've been so used to feeling awful for too much of our life that when we actually feel good, that feels weird. Yeah, absolutely. And it actually really, um, if we experience a lot of dysfunction and chaos in our early life, I mean, every, people know this, but you can be addicted to chaos and that oh, yeah. goes back to your nervous system. If your nervous system is more used to a, you know, hyperactive, you know, um, up and down environment, that's constant, kind of like the mosh pit. Then if you yep. get out of the mosh pit, you're going to be like, what is this? This is calm. It can feel like a big loss. Yeah. And, you know, as we know that, um, you know, as, as therapists, as counselors, as, you know, people helping others, yeah, people will try to replay that. And they'll ask, why do I keep getting in these terrible, abusive relationships in these, you know, dramatic job situations that don't work out? It's because you don't subconsciously, you want to match that energy that you're most familiar with in your body and in your emotional body. You know, it's yeah. kind of like I was saying with, doing the work with EFT to get to that place of calm, you have to be able to identify and decide I'm ready to let this go. I'm ready to make the effort to move away from the chaos and make my body feel more at home in the peaceful, calm place rather than the chaos. Not everybody's ready for that. And that's okay too. Yeah. Everybody, all at your own time, you know, but I imagine that when people find you or when they find me to work with, yeah. Something's they've got that nagging in their ear that's saying, maybe, maybe you could try this little nudge from the universe. That, that little <laughs> nudge. That's like, you think, you think um, you're ready to let some of this go now you keep getting upset about it and yelling about how much you want a, a loving, safe, healthy relationship, stable job. But then you're not doing the things that actually yeah. align with that. <laughs> exactly. I yeah. think a lot of people think that the work has to be a lot harder than it needs to be too. And yeah. I think as somebody with high functioning anxiety and ADHD, I always wanted something that worked like immediately, if not sooner or like yesterday. And so this was a technique that really aligned with me because it worked so quick. And um, it was amazing to me because I think I had some of those, uh, you know, false beliefs in, in my energy that, you know, if something took X amount of years or months to get this bad, that somehow it needed to take, you know at least some decent period of time to get better instead of realizing that like you can, you can heal in an instant, honestly. Like, I mean, it's not going to happen that fast for everybody, but Mm. you know, with once you're actually really well practiced with this kind of stuff, healing can be almost instantaneous. 
And it can definitely not take as long as it took to get into the situation. And I think that's kind of the hope that a lot of people are missing. Like, you know, oh, I'm in this awful situation or I'm in so much debt or, you know, how am I ever going to fix this marriage or, you know, this childhood trauma or this addiction or whatever else. And there's so many ways that are so full of hope and possibility and expedient also. Yeah, absolutely. I relate to that so strongly. And I think, you know, it's almost that, um, you know, they say that like you can, um, can strike a rock, you know, over and over a thousand times. And you think that it's that final strike that creates fire, the spark that counts, but it was every single hit before that, that led to it. And I think it's the same with addressing stuff, which is that, you know, we think that it should happen immediately, or we think that what we're doing isn't working. Right. But the truth is that from the time that we acknowledge a hurt, a pain, a tendency, a cycle that we don't like, Every, every little thing we do, every conversation we have, every book we seek out, anything we do is taking us towards this thing. And then there's that moment that feels almost like a, a light switch is flipped where finally you're like, oh, that feels, doesn't feel like it used to almost feels gone. Right. But to your point, I think also it's true that, um, you know, we can sort of sit down with, you know, a directory of people we feel like we have to call and services we have to seek to, you know, get to the root of this pain and break this cycle. But sometimes all it takes is just one little shift and you'll just notice the answers are already inside of us for whatever it is that we need. That's what it is. That's what it is. Cause if something's already in there, all it takes is for you to actually finally tap into it. Right. I mean, it could take like five years, but and, and, that's part and of not journey, everybody right? has the skill set or the mindset or yes. the understanding to tap into it and release it on their own, but yes. I promise you it's already in there. Yes. And it's just a matter of, you know, aligning with the right person or whatever you need to draw it out of you. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for that reminder. Um, cause in my own life, I do have things like that where I have, I have pain and sadness that I feel like is anything ever going to resolve this. Or is this, you know, nothing can touch this pain. There's, I can't heal this wound, you know, a wound that we can't never find the answers outside of ourselves. Right. And so it's what, I, when you said that, I realized that, you know, you can dance around it for a long time, but when things align and the time is right, you'll just suddenly notice like, oh, and, it, and it's gone. And it took all that, those different, you know, paths and attempts, but it doesn't mean it's not possible. Right. Cause it is in there, just as you said, cause we are whole and complete beings. We're perfect. We're divine within so powerful and very powerful. Yeah. So change is always possible. And then Teresa, could you talk a little bit about, um, becoming more me is, you know, you're, you're the founder of the, is it a company? Is it your business? Is it your, it's it's my business. Um, and also the name of my podcast. So both my business and my podcast have the same name. And, um, you know, I, I called it that because, um, you know, I developed the practices that I use and my style through my own healing and becoming more of the person I felt like I was meant to be and still am becoming, uh, in this world. And I love helping other professional women to do the same thing. And yeah, so I, I mainly work with professional women who are feeling out of balance with their work life, uh, situations and have stuff to, um, to resolve that. And usually they've tried a lot of things before. And I I work with a lot of therapists and other nervous system professionals and people who they, they know self-healing, they know healing, and yet they're still stuck and they're looking for an expert and guided path towards healing, whatever it is that they come to me for. And, um, that's, that's what I do in my business with this combination of different modalities that we've kind of been talking about today. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. So fantastic. Well, such beautiful work because just as we said that then the visual I just got now was like, yes, we have that thing inside of us, but sometimes it can feel like we're searching around in the dark. Right. And someone like you can step in where someone's like, please, please, I just need some help. I know, I know in my heart of hearts, deep in my soul that I have the tools, but I can't, it can feel very nebulous, right? When you don't know the path. Mm-hmm. And when you have someone that can say, let me help you, I can help yeah. you kind of put names to things to actually make some things tangible. So you can feel it. You yeah. can hold it. You can utilize it. I think the problem though, with a lot of people, like I work with people like you, like therapists or people like me who are already like super educated. is like, they know the words, they understand the thing. They're still stuck. And yeah. we just need to like get out of our own way. 
You know, sometimes we're like, yeah. we're too, we're too smart for our own good and all the things that we feel like we've been educated in and should be able to fix for ourselves. And it's kind of getting out of that space and getting back into like, just, I, I can let go and allow this, whatever it is to be let go too. Like, cause sometimes just be, being an expert comes with so much uh, pressure to yeah. be able to fix ourselves uh, and we're not even broken, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So it can be helpful, helpful for somebody to simplify it a bit where you're like, okay, because yes. just like you were saying, like, we think that, okay, I need to prepare for the next five years to heal from this, but really it can just be like a shift and mm -hmm. it can change everything. Just a little flip of the energy of the switch. And there you are. Yeah. So I'm definitely looking forward to, I know we talked about it. We're going to do a little tapping after this. So I'm really looking forward to your listeners getting to experience what this is like, how this works. Cause it's one thing to like, listen to us talk about shifting energy and getting out of our way and making things like move on the emotional scale and all of that. It's another thing to actually put your hands to your own body, say some words and feel it. Yeah. So I'm excited yeah. to, to, well, let's them. do that now. Are we going to, we're going to go ahead and jump off and we, we, yeah, we'll finish. We'll just finish up. Um, and, and we'll be taping that. And then your listeners will be able to go to the private sessions.com and grab a copy of that and see what we choose to tap on. I'm sure you're going to choose a juicy topic. Fantastic. Well, Teresa, thank you so much. This has been such an important conversation and a really powerful one. Thank you for the work that you do for being that, that guiding light for a lot of people, just helping them make those little tweaks and changes in their understanding to help them get out of their own way. Yeah. We all thank can you for the work that you do that. too. I've been really enjoying listening to your podcast. And I'm so glad we got to finally have this conversation. I know we met like eight months ago and I we've know. been trying to coordinate ever since. And like everything, I feel like this has just been so perfectly aligned and right on time. So thank you, yeah. Whitney. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Teresa.